Hello everyone, my name is Aditya and today we'll be looking at the append operation of the data stitch action within Oracle Integration Cloud. So first let's talk about why data stitch. Uh, you can incrementally build a message payload from one or more existing payloads with the stitch action. Um, so let's see the difference between the mapper and the stitch action. So within the mapper, uh, you can only generate full message payloads. So basically, if you attempt to map into an existing message payload, a full replacement of that payload occurs. Uh, whereas stitch action supports both partial and full replacement of the message payload. And today we'll be looking at this example. Um, the difference between the assign action and stitch action. So assign action is limited to only scalar type variables. Uh, complex objects or full payloads are not supported. So if you use the assign action, you see that the data type, uh, the only data type that you see there is the string and uh, not uh, complex objects. Uh, whereas the stitch action supports both scalar and complex type variables. So um, let's take a look at our integration for this example. Uh, we are accepting a JSON payload, which looks like this. Uh, it's uh, a array of uh, objects. The key is ID, so it's an array of objects of IDs. We will loop over these IDs, and we will call this a REST endpoint, passing in those IDs. And this REST will return based on whether the ID exists on the server side, then this API will return uh, a body uh, of fields for that particular ID. And if it does not exist, then the API will, will return a 404. So it will basically go into our fault handler. Now at the end, what we want to do is we want to return these multiple calls, the result of these multiple calls, back to whoever calls this integration. So since this API call is within the scope and within that for loop, if you look at the mapping back to the caller of this integration, on the source side, you will not see our call rest endpoint response object. And this is a very special case where you can use data stitch um, assign and append operations to build your payload so that you can map that to the response back. And in our case, the response will just be an array of uh, objects containing the ID and an exists flag. So in our happy path, if the ID exists on server side, we will say exists true. And if it goes to the fault handler, we will return exists as false. We will do this using the data stitch action and by using global variables. So we'll create two global variables. The first one will be global response array, which will store the, uh, the response, uh, which would be of the type response. So this receive input response is what we want to send back to the caller of this integration. So for this, we will select the response wrapper. And this will, the schema of this will be similar to this. So an array of objects containing ID and exit. We will also add another global variable called global response item. And this will be of type uh, and this will be of type only the ID and exists so we will select this so this item won't be a repeating element array will be a repeating element now to understand how we will do this using data stitch let's go to the slides so if you look here in our scope uh, we are calling that REST API. Uh, so what we did is we created two global variables. One is the response array, which mirrors what we want to send back to the user. And the second is response item, which is one object inside the array of objects. 
So once we call this REST API, and in first we'll look at the happy path. So let's say this ID123 exists. This is what we will get back from that REST API. So what we'll do is we will assign ID and exist to this response item global variable. And then we will append this variable inside the response array. So let's look at how we can do this within the integration. So I'll go to this flag. I will drag and drop a data stitch action. I'll call this assign and append response. Uh, as we looked at in our slides, this is first we will assign. So look at this response item variable. We will take the ID and we will assign the uh, call API. So that's our REST API and this is the response that we get from that REST API and we will assign the ID here. The second step is to take exist and we will also assign that from the response. And the third step is to take the global response array which as you can see mirrors the the response wrapper that we want to send back and to this result we will append this single item close and this is done now let's look at the fault handler section so we'll open the fault handler and to see how we will manage this, let's go back to our slides. So this time in our fault handler, we have the response item, we have the response area global variables, and the REST API will return a 404, and that's why it will go to the fault handler. So here we will assign the ID from the request since the response is a 404 and uh, exist we will hard code to false based on the 404. So again assign and then we will append this into the response array. So let's come back to our integration here we will add data stitch action. So similarly we will open the response item add ID and here, instead of from the call API execute response, we will take the ID from the current parameter. So that's the this thing. So this current is the current variable within this loop. And for the exists, we will assign, we will use functions this time. We'll go to Boolean functions and we will drag and drop the false. And the last step would be to go back to variables, open the response array, and to this result we will append this result. Close this and it saves. Now the last step is to map the response back and this time you will see the global response array variable and on the destination side we will just map Again, validate and close so that's all was needed now let's save and run this so as you can see here I'm in the testing portion of OIC uh, I'm sending in data 1, 2, 3, and I'm sending in data 3, 4, 5. Click on test. And since 1, 2, 3 exists on server side, we get exists true. And since for 3, 4, 5, it went into the error handling, it uh, says exists as false. So that's how you can use the data stitch action with an Oracle integration cloud. Thank you for watching.